Welcome back everyone, Minimax RPG, and today we're going to feature Deadlock. This game is incredibly popular and it's currently in a playtest. This is created by Valve, just has enormous following already. If you're lucky enough to get access to it in the playtest, definitely check it out. And if you don't have access, keep it on your radar because there's going to be a ton of people playing this. A lot of customization for this game. It's a combination of a shooter and a MOBA. So if you like titles like Fortnite or even Valorant, then you may enjoy this. And alternatively, if you like titles like League of Legends or Dota, you may enjoy this game as well. And if you like both of them, or both genres rather, then you may really like this. And there's already a lot of people who absolutely love this game. You're going to kill minions. That's what these little robots are. And they're going to have souls or an orb pop out. When you shoot that orb, you're going to get souls for your character. And this is essentially the currency of the game. You can also steal these from the enemy from an orange orb if you see it. You can then snipe it and pick up some souls. So there's a little bit of skill and some tactics involved in order to get the most amount of currency for your character, which you can then use to upgrade your gear. This character is a really strong 1v1 character, not necessarily a strong laner, but good in 1v1 scenarios. You wanna kinda of close the gap and then pick off characters and get back out and reset essentially. That's what I'm gonna be going for in this match. And I'm gonna mainly just be trying to hold the lane as opposed to advance it. And there's tons of builds. So you're gonna have the ability to purchase items and there's different builds that you can customize or make your own and you can use that to kind of advance different aspects of your character increase your stamina increase your damage whichever direction you want to go and you can just see by the number of favorites and likes on some of these builds already how many people are playing this game just in the play test so let's go ahead and get my character over to a safer spot and let's take a look here at some of the builds so you see again look at all those favorites and likes number of builds you can certainly create your own builds on one of the tabs there I'll be making builds as this game goes live and we'll kind of get access to more information. Currently, the game can only be played during certain time periods, which is not real conducive to my schedule, unfortunately, but I'm playing whenever possible and I will get builds out when I'm more comfortable with the characters and can kind of guide you in a stronger fashion. So this game is going to have lanes and you'll see the colors on the lower right in the minimap, yellow, orange, blue, purple. This is because the game, essentially your character is going to be moving vertically up and down for the most part. And of course you can go left to right, but in other MOBAs, typically you may be more familiar with the lanes being top, middle, and bottom. So they've colored these lanes so you can quicker identify where people may be looking for help. Now a huge factor of this game is going to be paying attention to this minimap, and that's true for all MOBAs. You want to make sure that you know when enemies are rotating, when whether they're on your team or the opposing team. If they're on the opposing team, you want to make sure you get to safety. And if they're on your team, then you want to make sure that you're kind of getting in a position where the two of you can combine your strengths and attack on a single enemy and try to take them out quickly. There are some kills, as you just saw, that occur in 1v1 situations. Again, this is a strong 1v1 character. The other character in this lane is also a pretty good 1v1 character as well. But for the most part, you're going to be looking just kind of to hold lanes, make rotations, and kind of capitalize at key times. Again, this character not super strong at pushing lanes, so that's why I'm retreating at this point. But in general, keep an eye on the minimap if you're new to the MOBA genre. The hardest thing to do is going to be just learning to follow that minimap and checking back incredibly frequently. You essentially want to look at your screen, look at the minimap, look at your screen, look at the minimap that often. Here I'm rotating in. There's two enemy players and two friendly players. So I'm going to rotate in and try to pick off one player here. You see I do get the jump and I can try to pursue here. Hopefully we can get a takedown here. They're both at relatively low health, but I'm getting up towards their tower and taking some damage. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this character does not want to linger. You just kind of want to get your burst damage out and then essentially just disappear because otherwise you'll get taken down yourself. So here I have to rotate back. That was an unsuccessful gank, so to speak. So we're going to rotate back lanes. We'll certainly have a number of videos covering this game as it becomes more popular and even just goes live. Here we have another opportunity, even though I'm low health, but you can see how much damage I can do to an enemy hero that's unsuspecting. Now, I'm very low health myself, so I'm going to need to retreat again. Hopefully I don't get picked off here. Now you can use the rail system to travel quickly between the area that you're in to another rail or even back to the base to heal. However, abandoning your lane is going to give the enemy player 
an opportunity to kind of close the gap or even increase their own souls, giving them a power spike or power advantage over your character. So a lot of things to keep in mind. You really only want to go back to the base to heal when absolutely necessary. Now you can check back to the curiosity shop as you get more souls and continue to improve your gear. You can also destroy objects in some of the buildings in order to get some additional souls. And you'll want to be kind of keeping track of all these things. There's even an urn that appears, a lot of other things. This isn't a comprehensive video. It's just to give you an idea of the gameplay. See if this is something that you'd like to check out. At this point, there's two enemies in the lane and I'm here by myself and there's no teammates on the minimap even close to me. So I'm gonna have to just kind of back up and try to hold this lane 1v2 for as long as possible. I'm certainly not gonna be able to push the lane with both of them here, but if I can just kind of delay them, then we have an advantage in another lane. Now I know from earlier that the second player in this lane actually came from the lane to my left. So they should have an advantage in that lane. So hopefully by the time that I stall them off here, they can clear one of the guardians in that lane, and I can kind of keep an eye to see the progress of that. At this point in the minimap, I can see that that player has since gone back to the original lane, so I can push a little bit further ahead, knowing that I took down the other player here. But again, since I'm not a tremendous pusher, I'm just going to kind of hold my ground here and wait for another opportunity. back up at this point just because I've taken some damage and this character is squishy. I really can't stress that enough. If you're interested in this character, just be aware that your survivability is somewhat limited. You essentially want to be at full health when you go in and you have more than enough damage to take down any other hero. See if we can sneak up on them. And I've got my ult here, so should be able to take them out no problem. So really strong character. If you're new to the game, this is fairly simple to play. A good recommendation here would be to start off with the Haze character if possible. When you enter the lobby, you have the option to select priority for which heroes you'd like to play. There's no way to guarantee that you get a particular hero but you can increase the chances. So ones that you really like, you can set as high priority. Ones that you don't mind, you can put as the middle priority. Ones that you'd like to try can be the low priority, and then you can just not select ones that you don't want to play at all. Help on purple. 
Now the hero that's rotated over against me is more of a melee character, almost entirely melee to tell you the truth. So I really want to keep my distance here because if I let them close the gap, then they have the ability to take my character down. So that's why I'm really kind of backing up as opposed to going into them like I am with the other hero that we're facing. This character that I'm facing right now, I want to close the gap. And the other guy may still be lingering here. I haven't seen him rotate on the map quite yet, so I need to be careful. But you're going to have a slightly different playstyle based on who you're playing. So it does take some time to kind of adjust to the game, get to know all the characters, not just the ones you like, but the ones you don't enjoy because you're going to eventually be faced against them as well. Now I've spent an enormous amount of time in this lane, which is probably not ideal for this character, but I'm still learning this character, still learning the game. A lot of people are kind of doing things like this, just trying to make the most of your time. I would rather try to rotate more often, but I'm just, again, trying to get comfortable with the character. But I really think that this character is a pretty strong ganker, so I should probably be moving around, covering more of the map, and picking off enemies in other lanes as well. Let's see if I can make a little bit of a move here. I have to be careful of the other guy coming behind me possibly finish off the guardian here looks like my team is in a fight in the lane to the right of me so i should be able to push this with any luck and get this down and let's just go over in fact in case you haven't seen me head there already see if we can get a kill the teammate took him down there's still one more enemy over here let's see if i can this guardian will go down very quickly so now we can kind of close the gap on the guy remaining Damage boost. Oh, there he is. Just hanging out in the tunnel. He's blocked me in here. I'm just trying to cover. I don't necessarily want to be stuck in here. I may just have to try to get out when I can here. And get my teammates to kind of help. And now we can go back and try to finish him off. I don't know why he left. That probably was to his advantage being in there. And see multiple players against one enemy is almost no chance. So it's safe. Safety in numbers in this game for sure, or any other MOBA, you always have a numbers advantage. It's always very strong. That's when you can kind of be aggressive. This is the walker. These are after the guardians in terms of the progress through the map. And these are going to be in all the lanes that you're playing. I, see Abrams. I have a decent amount of souls. Not the most on my team, or the most in the game even. But I've got a decent amount of souls, so I do want to make sure that I'm spending these to kind of keep my power advantage at a decent level. But I know that I'm stronger than this hero here and have a favorable 1v1 against them. So I can go ahead and try to pick this character off before going back to the shop. And again, just trying to close the gap against them. That tactic has worked pretty well so far for me. Now i got to get out because the Guardian's hitting me. And I don't see any enemies so that guardian is very low but i don't see any enemies on the map so i'm actually going to back up because i'm worried that somebody may pick me off and my minions may even push that guardian down so i'm gonna go back and spend some money now upgrade some gear and go back out this is a general strategy for this game and similar to other mobas you want to make sure that you're using the currency that you get to keep those power spikes on your character Go help out Orange, see if we can hold them back now. The Guardian's a little more than half health. I think we can hold them off here. A lot of pings going on. Difficult to keep up with all the pings, but I think I'm going to hang out in Orange for a little bit. Please check it out here. Fairly low. Got one. And I have... Lost the other one. There he is. So using the line, can I get him in the air? I do very low damage from far with this character. So the distance can affect the damage that your weapon deals, and you'll notice that more depending on which character you're playing. So my teammate actually takes that guy down. So now I can just kind of keep going, try to flank this guy. And now there's two of them in the lane. And I've got one teammate coming from the other side. So this is going to be a 
2v2, now a 3v2. Somebody coming in from the side as well for us. So again, just always keep an eye on the minimap. We should be able to win this encounter. Not just the 1v1 here, but we should be able to take both of the enemies out. Hopefully without any deaths on our own team. And finish them off with a melee attack. Always satisfying to do that. And you can do a regular melee attack or you can also do a charge. That was the charge version, which is a little bit harder. Slight delay, so you kind of need to line it up. Worked in that situation. So let's push up here. Don't have a tremendous wave clear, unfortunately, but we're just going to push a little bit here just to kind of show it off. Some characters have really good wave clear and you can really push out multiple lanes just by rotating back on the trolley or the rail system above you. Get away from this guy. He is the one that is pretty strong in melee range. I'm not sure that I actually win a 1v1 against that guy if it's a fair fight. So I kind of need to be smart about the engage. I do have a teammate behind me. But the walker is also very strong. Does a lot of damage to you if you get caught. So I'm just going to try to be safe here. Use my invisibility to get a little bit closer and poke a little bit. Don't necessarily want to go in, but if I can chip them away. So my teammate has gone back and they're actually engaged in combat behind me. I need to be careful that they don't go down. And then I would kind of have an enemy behind me. So at this point, I'm going to kind of turn around. Just trying to clear what I can. Both of them are low. You can see that on the top of the screen. My teammate actually gets the kill. So you can see health bars when they're in combat at the top of the screen as well. And that could be very useful to know kind of when you should assist or not. I might have kind of uh, let my teammate get a little bit lower than I should have. But I was trying to push this lane out onto that walker and keep some pressure. Probably not the best idea because I've been pretty forward that this character isn't great at pushing the lane. So it was probably just a bad decision by my part. Should have secured that kill and then pushed together. See what else we can pick up here. Now I haven't necessarily been following the guide for which item to buy in order that they recommend, but I am just using the items that are recommended. So maybe not ideal, but kind of putting my own twist on it based on the matchup that I've had. You'll get more familiar with the items and that aspect will be a lot quicker to navigate once you've just played the game more. And it doesn't take too long. You'll pick up the map, you'll get comfortable with locations, you'll pick up the items. Honestly, the most difficult or time consuming aspect is playing all the heroes and getting comfortable with all their skills to know how to manage the encounters when you're in combat. And that kind of takes a lot of time because you have to go through a match or multiple matches with every hero, whether you like them or not, to kind of learn all the skills, but pretty similar to other MOBAs in that regard. So if I had to guess, this is probably going to end in a few minutes based on just the way the match has been going. We have a lot more currency than the enemy team. And we seem to have another player that's pretty skilled as well, doing really well. So I think we're probably going to end this in a few minutes. So we're pushing towards their final base. And all the objectives are here. This is one here. You can take out a turret here. And there's also one on the other side. They're actually called shrines. But you can take out one here, one on the other side. And then you can hit that thing in the middle. It's firing lasers out right above me at this moment. And then that'll transform into a second stage. So the objectives are really straightforward, right? You're just pushing through the lane, killing everything with a red bar on your way through. Hopefully I can get out of here. I might have gone in too far. I think we're all right. Back up to my teammate for some assistance. And see how we can do here. But in general, the matches tend to be, I would say between 25 and 30 minutes so far. I don't know if they're gonna do any tuning in that regard, but it's, you know, a decent amount of time. So just make sure you have enough time to play a match before you queue up, if you're interested in the game. Oh, I'm not sure I make it out of this one. Might finally go down. Yeah. Well, it happens, I guess. But getting pretty close into the base, I should have backed up, especially since the majority of my team at that point was no longer there. That would be my cue to leave, especially on a squishier hero. I should have left long ago. 
lesson learned, I suppose, but we had an advantage and ahead in the currency means we have more items, more powerful items, so sometimes you can win situations in which you're outnumbered. Here, I think I'm gonna have to stick to the team, but you can see we've got almost 120 currency. They've got about 75, so just a big advantage at this point. Teammates are pushing back up the purple lane. One teammate hanging out in orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump on Express. And I do have a speed boost here. I think I'm gonna save it. And that'll allow me to quickly retreat or get back into the fight if I go down again. This guy is out in the open. Should be able to take him out. There we go. Now we can move forward. And as the match goes on, the respawn timers for players will become increasingly longer. That allows one side or both sides to push further and complete objectives. So getting kills in the later game is really important. Keeping your own team alive is important as well. But taking the enemy out and putting them on longer respawns really gives you ample time to kind of take things out. And that's kind of the game's built-in mechanic to make the games end rather than stalemating. So just kind of doing whatever damage I can, getting in, getting out, repeating the process. So this is the enemy's little frost road there. forget what the name of the ability is. Uh, but you can actually walk up that. Players on both teams can walk up that after it's created. It's a lot easier for the player who creates it to navigate because it just trails behind them. But if you're careful enough. Another thing is I have increased the sensitivity for the mouse just to better aim and kind of keep up with the movements and I probably will increase it again. So keep that in mind if you're playing this for the first time and it feels like you just everybody is moving quicker than you. That is something you'll have to kind of work up to and build up to. I have not played a shooter in a really long time. In fact, it's the genre that I thought I was done with until this game came out. So been pleasantly surprised with how much fun this is. I had really kind of gotten bored of them in the past, but the combination of this being also part MOBA has really caught my interest and made it incredibly engaging and enjoyable to play. Can't say enough positive things about this game. So we're in at the final boss here. It's already transformed. And we're just essentially taking out as many enemies as we can. And now we're gonna kind of go forward and finish this boss off, trying to get three players up. So hopefully we can pick the last of them off. That would give a really easy clear, but I think we could also focus the boss and just take it out at this point as well before they're able to take us down. Just kind of being greedy. And now I got to get out. So the enemy boss, very low health. You can see it on the screen. And it's going to go down just from the minions. I, we might have had one person in there. Hard to tell. But nonetheless, that's the game. And you just do this over and over. Every time you play another match, you'll start back at the beginning. Essentially, with no skills, you'll choose one to unlock. Rebuild the currency. So check it out. Deadlock. Ton of fun. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch. And have a great day.